everyone welcome to a new video in this one we're going to be showing you how to use a, a fork of the dolphin emulator uh, this one's going to allow you to play the game uh, you know like a first person shooter with your keyboard and your mouse controls uh, there's also an option to get it to work with a uh, dual analog uh, joystick the one I'm going to be showing you is the one with the uh, keyboard and the mouse and we're going to head over to this page right here First one is going to be this one here, so we're going to go ahead and download this uh, part right here. Go ahead and put that in your downloads folder. That's the primehack.updater.exe. We're going to download that one. Then if you uh, have an issue once you launch the emulator and it does not work for you, if it gives you an error, it's more than likely that you're missing this uh, redistributable version of uh, Microsoft Visual C++. So if you do get that error, just go ahead and go to this link. You're going to click on this spot right here. And you're going to download, uh, you know, the corresponding one to your version of your Windows install. Uh, the next one is going to be the HD interface textures. So go ahead and follow that link. We're going to go down here to this one here that says the DDS version 1.7. Download that one. Put that in your downloads folder. And then this one here is an option one. This one's going to be the one for the uh, high definition textures. So what you're going to do is go to this page. You're going to scroll down right here where it says files. You're going to go across, click show, and you're going to download this one here. If you have the trilogy, if you have the other uh, Metroid Prime games, you got, you know, the first one, second one, third one. You can go ahead and download those separately. And then once you're done with all those files, you're going to go ahead and close this. Now, this is very simple to set up. Once you have all those files in your folder, what we're going to do is create two folders. So you're going to have your download folder, and then you're going to have another folder you're going to create where you're going to put the emulator. So go ahead and take the prime hack updater. You're going to put that in the folder where you're going to run your emulator from. So make a second, you know, window. Put that there. Then the other ones you're going to have right here. So you're going to have the trilogy folder if you want to install all the HD textures. If you do not, you're just going to have this one here. So go ahead and right click on that and extract it to its own folder. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and delete the uh, zip file. All right, so this is super simple. What we're going to do now is go into the folder where you have the uh, Prime Hack Updater moved to, and this is where you're going to run the emulator from. So just go ahead and double click that. And once you do that, you're going to be greeted with this little update right here. And then what I recommend you do is pick the portable mode. There's two advantages to using that one. One is that you'll have the, uh, you know, the uh, item installed in one single folder. You can then take that folder, you know, compress it, zip it up, put it on a flash drive, and then just take it over to another machine if you want to install it. That way you don't have to go through the install process again. And then the other option to that is that you'll be able to look at the Dolphin menu if you want to make changes. If you pick this one on the left, it will run without the uh, Dolphin window, which, you know, may not be the optional thing to do if you want to go in there and play around with the settings. So definitely recommend portable mode. Once that's done, just go ahead and tell it yes. And as you can see, super easy. It's, it, you know, it's going to install it and put the files on your hard drive. If this is your first run, it's going to give you this message right here. So you're just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, the first thing you want to do is going to go ahead and go to File, and then you're going to tell it where you, are, you, know, where you have your games at. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, once you have your folder, you know, pointed to the correct location for the emulator, go ahead and click open. And it should go ahead and install the game for you. Now, the reason I'm doing this is uh, in case you guys have never run this, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you know, won't know what it looks like. So this is the normal window that you would get. And, you know, you just go ahead and bypass that and the game will start. And then the reason I showed you that is what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change that. So go ahead and close this window back again. And we're going to do the options that we got from the folders that we downloaded. So you can go into the folder now that has the HD interface. And then on the right side, you're going to open up user, load textures. And this is the folder we're going to concentrate on. So we're going to take the R3M folder from the left here. We're going to copy that. 
or you know drag and drop into that window so you're going to have this folder it's going to end up on the right side and then we're going to go into the extras folder and pretty much do the same thing so while that finishes up i'll open up the other folder now with these i pretty much recommend that you put all of these in there so we'll go into these and i'll explain why so this one here is going to be the one we mentioned so this is going to allow you to run the game with the key with the keyboard so you're going to go inside the two folders in here so you're going to click in here r3m take this copy it paste it into this folder over here which is also the r3m folder that will allow you to use the keyboard along with your mouse and it even has uh, the pictures on here of this so you could probably make use of that to maybe put it on your desktop so you can reference it later now the small crosshair also recommended because that's going to give you a small crosshair if you ever played this game before you'd notice that it is a uh, kind of huge cursor you know uh, very different than the one that you know people that play fps's are used to because they're pretty usually you know pretty small scaled so if you're used to the smaller icon for the uh, cursor, you're going to want to go ahead and also copy this over to that folder also. And here's a good example of what it's going to look like. So I'll open up Photoshop here. And that's what the cursor is going to look like versus having that really big cursor. We'll close that out and we're going to go in here into the sky. So this is going to make the sky look better. Here's another uh, comparison shot for that. So before on the left, after on the right, and then you can even see the difference on the cursor size. So that's what the cursor would look like normally. And then this is kind of what it would look like. So it's smaller, you know, and more agreeable with the modern FPSs. So we're going to go ahead and go into this folder, take this one and copy that into the right side folder. Also, so we're basically going to pretty much do that with all of these here. The hanger, here's another comparison shot. So if you go in a little bit on that one, you can really notice it on the ship here versus how the ship looks over here, a lot crisper. So that's the example of that one. So we're going to go into this R3M folder here. Copy this one, paste it over here also. Same thing with this one. There's a comparison shot. Before and after. Also showing an example of the cursor on there. So same thing, go into the RTM, copy, paste that into the folder you created on the right. HD uh, Samuel's face, there you go. Nice little difference on that also, nice and sharp. Once again, open the folder, copy, paste it over here. And this one will give you a nice little boot up screen. So this is what you're going to see versus seeing the screen that you saw when I started the game. So that's a whole lot nicer. So go ahead in here. Now th this you're going to use depending on what version of the controller you're using. So you want to go ahead and use this one here if you're doing the keyboard uh, mouse version, which is what we're using. So go in there, copy that folder. And once again, paste it over here. Now, if you do not want the high, you know, definition textures, this is going to be where you're done. If you do want the high definition, you know, textures, we're going to uh, go to that page now. And I'm going to show you, the, well, I already showed you how to download it. So it's going to be the folder that ends up in Trilogy with, with that name. So let's go ahead in there. And then now uh, keep in mind, this is a really big uh, download. So that's going to take a while for you to download. So if you do want it, you're literally going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm not going to do it because it's just going to take time. I'm going to put this in here, show you what it looks like, and we'll launch from there from the install that I've already, you know, have on a computer. So if you do have the trilogy and you do want the HD packages, go ahead and just copy that. And you're also going to paste it on here. So once you're done with your folder, the load textures R3M folder, you're basically going to see this here along with that trilogy folder inside here. Okay. And that's inside the, uh, the other folder so really the only one you're going to be messing with you know once you're in there with the hd texture updates and so forth it's going to be the folder we'll go here once again so it's going to be the folder where you have it user textures 
or I'm sorry, load, then textures. And that's the folder here, the R3, and where all the files are going to go. And like I said, you're going to have the Trilogy folder in here also if you decided to go with that uh, HD graphic install. So what I'm going to do, fast forward real quick, we're going to go into the folder where I have it originally, and we're going to launch that, and we're going to show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so we're all fast forwarded here to the spot on my hard drive. So what we're going to do is go ahead and launch the uh, emulator. We're now done with all the, you know, the options that we needed as far as the files. So we're going to go ahead and launch this, and I'm going to take you here step by step. Once you launch the emulation, remember to point to when you go to open, you're going to point the, uh, you know, the program to the folder where you have your uh, Metroid game backed up to. And then what we're going to do is just go ahead and uh, right click on here, as you can see, kind of some of the options on here and so forth. You can do a system update right from here. And, you know, pretty much the other options you're probably never use but once you have the game up here and loaded what we're going to do is go over to config and on here i'm going to show you the stuff you would need to change most of the stuff you can leave alone everything on here pretty much could be left as is the audio you can change uh, what audio you have on here the one that works the two most used ones are open AL and uh, QB. So I have open AL on, but you know, that's up to you, whichever one seems to work better for you. The paths, you can go ahead and set it in here. As I said earlier, you can go ahead and add it from here. So that way, every time you launch it, you know, it'll have the trilogy game already here in your menu and you can just add it right there. So you don't have to click open every single time. Once you've done this part here, it'll just open up directly to the menu with the game loaded right here. And matter of fact, probably the easiest case scenario is once you have the emulator set up, you can right click on here and just go ahead and add a short shortcut to desktop. And then from there, you know, you can pin it to the taskbar. You can pin it to the start menu wherever you want to put that shortcut. Okay, the graphic spot here, this is the most important one. Now, you can pick Vulkan. I think the one they recommended was Direct. 3d11 so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and launch it with that one for this one i had been using the vulcan but we'll do this just to follow the recommendations uh you would want to do v-sync that way the screen won't tear up if you move quick it'll keep everything nice and smooth uh i would start in full screen so we'll set starts up with the you know window full size let's see on here i don't think there's anything on here else that you would really need to mess with uh, enhancements let's go in there now I'm gonna have it run at 1080p you can go up as high as uh, 8k if the if your system is capable of it uh, anti-lacing this one I would I kind of leave it alone because we're using the HD textures already those are pretty you know well upscaled so I don't mess with the anti-lacing if you do not use the high uh, you know high definition texture pack you could go ahead and kind of play with the setting to adjust it to your preference and let's see on here these you could pretty much leave alone the hacks this i think you can pretty much leave alone also advanced now on this one here there's a, a couple in here you want to make sure you have checked for example this load custom textures if you're using the hd pack you need to have that checked now, if you have lots of memory, you can go ahead and uh, check this to make it load faster. If you have anything less than, I would say, 16 gigs, do not check this. But then again, you can test it on your own. Leave this checked. If you launch the game and it seems to load quick and work fine for you, then you can leave it checked. If you see that it's giving you issues with that option enabled, just go ahead and uncheck it. And I think everything here else you can leave alone. I like to leave this on just to see. You know the frame rates to make sure it's just getting a steady 59 or 60 frames per second and then on here there's a couple of more options this is if you want to make the game look like it did in the uh, gamecube version so you can go ahead and enable that if you want the effects to look like it did back in the uh, gamecube one uh this i left alone the bloom and reduce bloom is checked and then this one, you also have an option to show the crosshair like it did in the GameCube version. 
You can also reset the color and then select. I have it left at the default. So once you've done that, you're pretty much done. So like I mentioned earlier, once you get that done, you want to, you know, kind of make it easy on yourself. Just right click, add shortcut to desktop so you can start it with one click. And you'll even bypass the uh, having to turn on the, the emulator. It'll shoot you right into that. Now here for the controllers, it should pretty much already be set up for you because we got the, uh, you know, that file that we put in there for the keyboard and the mouse. So this you can pretty much leave alone. So what I'm going to do now is actually launch the game. And we're going to see how this runs with the settings that it has. And then I'll talk you through a couple of things on here. One of the things that people had a lot of issue with, I saw a lot of posts on it, was how to get the, the scanner to work. So I'm going to show you that now when the game kicks in. And there's the uh, replaced uh, skin for when it loads. As you can see, the FPS is up on the upper right. Now, if you look down left, you see that it shows the press one. So that, you know, that was with that file that we put in there. So now it knows you're using the keyboard and mouse configuration. So instead of showing you the, uh, you know, the usual uh, text that you will see there, it's showing you one for the keyboard and the mouse. So we'll go ahead, we'll bypass this here. Press once again to start. And we'll go into one of my configurations here. Now I launched the start on purpose. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys like a little quick intro on here. And then I'll show you, uh, you know, what it looks like with the HD textures because they are activated now. So if you do it this way and follow the video, it should boot up like this when you start playing. So as you can see right now with the uh with the texture pack for this looks way clearer than the original uh Wii version. This spot right here is one of the ones where you can see the uh, difference in the HD textures right away. If you look at the spaceship uh, on the original game, the uh, you know the spot where she comes out of the door here, it was kind of blurry. Uh, you'll be able to notice the change right away right here, and also when it opens up. Right, there we go nice and smooth so now if you have this set up correctly you should be able to start left and right with the you know the a and b keys and you can aim with your mouse so right now what i'm going to do is open up this part right here i'm going to show you how to use the scanner because there was a little bit of confusion with this so if you have this set up default and you didn't make any changes in it what you want to do is go ahead and uh, press both the q and the e key together then scroll your mouse up and that'll activate the scanner. To scan, you're going to press the right button on your uh, joystick and you'll be able to scan like so. Then once you fire, you'll be able to close the window. So I'll just play a little bit in through here to show you and then that'll be it for the video.
door is stubborn. <laughs> So what for anyone that's played FPS Essence in the past, or you know, just in general, if you like the FPS games, uh, that's probably one of the reasons I never really played this game in the past, even though I owned it, because I could not get used to playing with the, uh, you know, with the Wiimote, because I was so used to playing first person shooters. So this here, you know, for, for people like me that have played uh, the FPS games for, you know, for such a long time, it's, uh, you know, way more comfortable be it, be able to move and maneuver through the game. And then you want to hit the uh, the control will make him go into the morph ball there. So Q and E, scroll with your mouse to activate that. Mouse or the you know the mouse two button. And you scan and you're good to go so as you can see that is a big time improvement on the game uh, like I said if your system you know is not uh, like a mid mid range gaming you can always try it without the uh, HD pack and that should work for you worst case scenario you can you know also play around with the settings and bring the resolution down uh, until you can get it you know to a workable frame rate for you so we are all done with that one. Hopefully you guys can, uh, you know, give that a shot at, you know, if you had the game or wanted to try it in the past. Uh, leave uh, any comments or questions in the comment section. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And we will see you guys on the next video.